Hi, Achim from Windows Space Explorers. So as you see, we sit on a boat, so it could be also Achim from American Runabouts. And for me, that's great because in this video, I'll combine my two passions, diving and boating, because I had a few requests where people said, hey, in some of your videos, you mentioned that you're diving from a private boat. And can you talk a little bit about how to outfit and prepare a private boat for diving? And we already did that in the American Runabouts workshop and it came out super nice, at least that's what we thought. And then we figured that the SD card was corrupted and we couldn't use it. So now we're in Amsterdam on this ITC, as you probably heard now a couple of times, and we sit on the dive boat from the dive shop and um, we'll go through this again. So the first thing that is super important for me is whatever I tell you here is my way of doing it. So that's very, very personal and it is not correct or better or right or whatever that's my way of doing it it works for me it might be horrible for you it might be good for you but it's not 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 advice in any case it's just that's my way of doing it you ask me that's the answer the next thing I want to point out is there's completely different rules all around the world world when it comes to boating so be hundred percent sure that you follow all regulations and rules that apply for the area you are in boating and diving from private boats there's a couple of countries where you can get in deep 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 trouble for that Croatia for example one of them and let's wait till this motorbike's gone um, for example my boats registered in Germany so it obviously fulfills all the German requirements, but there's still a difference if I drive with that boat in Germany or in Italy, which I do a lot of times as well. So for example, I have to bring a couple of items on the boat that are not required in Germany, but that are required in Italy. If I don't have them on board, I may get in trouble, like a certain life ring, life vest, line, whatever, which in Italy, for example, you have to have almost every size boat in Germany, you only have to have it from a certain size on. Just as a remark, the other thing is please stay away from the obvious things like nature zones, protected zones, etc, etc, which also can bring you into legal trouble and can be super expensive. Thinking of, for example, Mallorca in Spain, when they catch you anchoring in a no anchor zone or in a nature reserve, this will be more expensive than buying a new boat. Okay, that's the ugly side of that. Uh, now let's talk about boats. There is no definite answer to that. Um, it really depends on what you have. If we talk about a 4 meter inflatable with a rigid bottom and a 15 horsepower engine on it, or if we talk about an 8 meter weekender that you occasionally want to dive from. So that's a huge difference. So what I did in the past couple of years is I had a 5 meter 30 center console fiberglass boat with a 40 horsepower engine that I used for a lot of work buoy service work diving etc on the lakes and that I also took on vacation as a family boat and that I used for diving and that was awesome first of all it was a workhorse so it didn't matter if there is a scratch in it, if there is a little dent in it or whatever, because it was a work boat. Um, so that was perfect. It had tons of space for five meters. I could throw in all my dive gear. We've been actually diving from this boat with four people in technical uh, setup, rebreathers and stages, which was not super comfortable, but it was doable. Um, but as a pleasure boat for the family, <laughs> talking about pleasure boats, um, as a pleasure boat for the family it kind of sucked because it didn't provide any space to sit down, to lay down, to whatever. I mean sunbathing for the wife was not a real option. The kids loved it because they could jump off and on, didn't care if they put water in the boat or whatever. But yeah, not the best setup ever. Um, as a combination, as a dive boat, great. The other thing I often use is a Bayliner 2250 Cobra. Which Super nice boat, um, great 
weekend, a small cabin, etc., etc. Lots of space for the family, lots of fun, but not ideal for diving. So I use it for diving, but it's just me and my wife, sometimes my kids, whatever. But it's a recreational thing, so it's the complete wrong boat to put a double 12 in two stages and jump off it. I mean, it's theoretically possible if you go solo, which you obviously don't do. Um, I've been diving from that with a rebreather. Um, yeah, cool, all good. Um, it's also great for some recreational stuff, but it's not really feasible as a dive boat. So that's probably two pretty extreme uh, examples. So what do you have to to have in mind when we talk about these things? The first thing is how to get in the water, how to get out of the water. In is usually relatively simple, you just jump in. Out of the water on a lot of these classical pleasure boats can be a real pain in the butt because usually these bathing ladders are not made to carry a person in scuba gear. And usually they're very short, so you're like this and then you have to pull yourself up which either breaks your back or the ladder out of the, the fiberglass. No, no good options there. So what I did on the console boat, obviously, is I had a reinforced plate and I had a Christmas tree ladder, an extended one, which even survived me in a double 12 going up there. Not ideal, but reasonable. On the Bayliner, for example, that's simply not possible. I can't get a proper ladder on there. Although, I mean, I can, but then I kind of ruined the boat also from the look. So what I do in that case is I have a proper rigging point like a good cleat or something like that and I put a line in the water with a couple of, of metal rings and obviously I can jump in from the bathing platform that's not, not a problem at all and when I come back to the boat I take off my gear and I clip it in there and then I go out of the water and when I'm standing on the bathing platform I take my gear out of the water which works pretty nice then I have a proper big bin where I throw all my wet stuff in and then that's fine, but obviously that works for one or two people and not for a group. The next thing you have to think about is where do you store your tanks? I mean, if you look at the dive boat here, you obviously have um, that center uh, rig where you can, that's stainless steel, that's, that's made for that. You put the, you probably don't hear me now anymore because the microphone's pointing away from me. Um, so that's made for that. You put the tanks there, nothing can break. They got strapped down. That's all perfect. So on your private boat, you normally don't have these options. So what you have to do is you have to lay down your tanks and make sure they're not rolling back and forth. And first of all, don't hurt anybody and also don't damage the boat. The other thing is if you dive from a smaller boat, um, the weight of the tanks and your dive gear may affect the performance of the boat. So if it comes into glide or if it just blows through the water. So, um, yeah, that, 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 there's no recommendation. I mean, you have to figure it out. It depends on the boat, on the construction of the boat, on the space of the boat that you have, back, forward, etc. The size of engine, the possibilities to trim the engine, the prop that you drive, you have to figure it out. But it's something you definitely have to take into consideration and you have to make sure that this is all safe. Um, yeah, anchoring and um, <coughs> sorry, anchoring and shot line. That's two topics that are uh, really important. So, with a private boat, you probably don't go to super deep spots because on that private boat, depending on the size, you probably don't have a hundred meter shot line on the boat plus the chain plus the proper weight, etc. So. I, in, in my opinion, you will be limited to a certain depth range. Of course, again, depending on the boat and, and how many people and what gear, etc. But that's something that you definitely have to um, have a look on. And then regarding anchoring, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to explain now how to anchor a boat in a proper way. That's a bit off topic, but definitely you need to, uh, to set before, see if you're allowed to anchor there. And if you are allowed to anchor there, you don't want to damage a dive site with your anchor, so don't throw it on a wreck or something. There's, for example, a little aircraft wreck in Elba that we dive frequently, and every year I see some idiot throwing the anchor on that pretty fragile um, aluminium 
uh, aircraft rack. So obviously you want to anchor off the rack and then swim through the rack. So that's the, the, the things that you're kind of responsible when you are diving from your own boat. I generally prefer to dive from a shot line. Regarding shot line, there is a video on this channel where I explain a little bit the shot line and especially how to get the shot line up um, in an easy, very, uh, very nice way. And I put the link to that um, video in the description so you can check that out. Um, cameraman, what, what am I missing? I think we're pretty good so far, other than uh, having a great time and <laughs> enjoying boating, enjoying diving. Yeah, I'm... Oh yeah, uh, sonars. That, that, that's, that's, that's an important one, how to find your dive spot. And actually there was somebody asking specifically about that. Um, a couple of years ago I had a real side scan sonar, long cable, towfish, had to be plugged in in a computer, etc., 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 which was a nightmare. I mean, I ran into trouble traveling with this thing a couple of times because it looked like a like a rocket. <laughs> um, and the other thing is heavy cable. It was pretty big and a pain in the butt to use. You had to tow it with the board at a very small um, speed, a very low speed. And I finally sold this thing and was super happy when it left the house. So obviously. As all our technical stuff increases and gets better and better and better, there is fish finders uh, on the market that have the so-called chip technology that deliver pretty decent three-dimensional images of the bottom, almost like a black and white picture. And they are pretty, pretty, pretty good um, for what the average diver needs to find a proper dive spot. I found quite a few wrecks with, with this thing and I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description so you can check it out and they are expensive but they're super cheap when you compare them to a proper side scan sonar like Expedition Range. The thing that I used was new almost 80 grand. I still paid a fortune for it when I sold it uh, when I bought it second hand and when I when I sold it I lost a ton of money and the thing that I use now on the boat, which delivers super nice results, I think was less than two grand. So um, that's pretty reasonable uh, for what you get. And you check it out, there's different different versions and they have, uh, there are ones that are good for deeper spots and good for shallower ones. And obviously the more money you put on the table, the more possibilities you have. Um, to fine-tune that for your personal needs. Other than that, let me know if you have questions, if you need more information, put it in the comment section and um, I'll take care of that. Thanks for watching. Uh, there's more people coming so we have to stop the video anyway because it's gonna get noisy. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.